In this session, we're going to take a look at some of the limitations that we have with simple steps over print. Yes, we can do all kinds of color conversions and color management. We can really work with overprinting. We can add it to designs. But it does have some limitations due to the complexity involved with the overprinting process in CorelDRAW and due to some of the ways in which CorelDRAW handles these objects. Here you have on the screen a simple graphic, and I'm just going to go ahead and convert this to an overprint design. This will be a two color. Create a selection palette. I'm going to go ahead and convert all of this. I'll get everything here and we'll go to one click conversion. Select OK. Now I'll change the color there in my PowerPoint. But now we're all Pantone colors here. I'll go to here to go ahead and get my conversion. I'll get my red and my yellow and we'll go ahead and create a two color overprint palette. This will be much faster than a three color overprint palette because we're not dealing with all three colors. And this will come out with about 100 or plus colors and then the tints for those colors. But if we want to apply these colors to something like a gradient blend or different types of media objects and draw, they're not going to work at this point in time. We may be able to solve these issues in the future, but this is the release of version 1.0. Now, if I come in here and I say take this object and I'll go to the interactive fill tool and I'll change this top red to let's say the red here and I'll change this bottom down here to say this light orange. And then I'll go ahead and I'll delete this one. I'm not going to need that anymore. I'll take this and I'll go ahead and I'll power clip this inside of here. Power clip inside. And I didn't want to do that. I'll go up here and just extract this. Extract contents. I'll go ahead and delete that. Now, we've got colors here from a palette, but if I go generate overprint design, actually, i got to go ahead and select these. Generate overprint design. It'll process them, but you'll notice that nothing has been set up as overprint. So when you're working with fountain fills, there are workarounds. You can actually go ahead and say, create a red like this, and then use your transparency tool and blend that in down like that. And if you wanted to have a fade, you could bring this up here and just duplicate this. We'll mirror, mirror it horizontally and fill it with one of our lighter oranges. And we'll bring this up here, just like you see there. Now, at this point in time, these are going to be converted to overprint colors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take and get rid of this here. I'll hit delete here and then I'm going to go on here and I'm going to select generate overprint design. We'll let that process. Now you can see that this does not look correct. If we go to view and turn off simulated overprints, it does look correct, but it's kind of washed out because you're not seeing the overprint. So there is an issue between these transparencies and the overprints in draw. However, if I separate this, it will come out with the correct look. I'll go to Advanced Tools, Simple Steps 3. We'll let that open up here. I know this is all spot colors. So I'll go ahead here and I'll go to Separations. I'll go to Half Tones. And then I'll go ahead and we'll make our red 52.5 to do that 30 degree offset. And then I'll click on Generate Separations here and we'll let that process. And you'll see that even though it doesn't visually look correct in CorelDRAW, you can still work with some gradients by doing some workarounds if you're working in overprinting. And by all means, you can do all of the fills and outlines and other things that you'd be working with in vector objects in Draw. But it's a tool that, because of the complexity and the way in which Draw works, so you're going to hit some issues sometime when you do. It's best to just find an easy workaround, as you're going to see here, as I just did with this gradient blend. Now, here is my white. As I said, we're not going to want those. We'll go ahead and delete those. Here is my red, and I can go ahead and right click that. Here is what would be my yellow, which I believe is here. And then I can just take this and copy this, and go back to my red and paste this in. And you can see what we get here when we're dealing with that, which is close to what we actually started with. I'll hit Control C here, and we'll go back here to where we started. Go ahead and paste in. We'll bring this down. Now on top we've got the yellow here, but I believe that should be to the back. So we'll order. We'll go to the back of the page. And you can see here that we've got this set of correctly. I'm going to go to view, turn on simulated overprints, and you can see that that's not really working there. But yet the way this was really set up to blend, you can see it actually is quite accurate in the separation process. It's just the way in which that Corel renders these. But we can see that our fade, fade was coming in here and we lost it here in the end with the transparency in the view simulated overprinting. But you can work with these fades and blends. You just got to work around them and do them manually. Just want to make you aware of some of the things. You know, you get into drop shadows and some of the lenses and stuff. The overprinting is really not going to work, but it works very well with solid vector shapes 
and things like that. So go ahead and wrap here. And I guess we'll go ahead and wrap our quick start here and we'll get some more sessions for the Simple Steps Overprint together over the next few weeks. This will just be for the initial launch of the product and these, those of you that want to get started with overprinting and understanding, getting ready for the next season, being able to work with it next year, or actually in 2013 to take your shop to the next level.